Hey guys, this is Wolf your one and only, and welcome to some more Dragon Blaze. We're gonna go over to the skills for the new overlords. But first, I wanna address something. This is the main reason why you should not trust any of uh, the reviews inside of this game, especially when people don't have the characters, which I think they should really change it to you can't comment unless you have the character, especially for reviews. Like, that needs to be a thing. Because there's some people I call a lot of BS on. Oh, uh, where, where is it? Where is it? I ultimated her. And not as great as I thought. <laughs> Even other people can call that BS. Because you can't craft her. Well, you can't deify her or make her into 12-12. She's not even available to us right now. Not only that, we haven't even been through, like... The number of days you have to log in just to receive her. It's like five days from now. Yeah, this just started like three days ago. <laughs> I'm already calling BS on people right now. This is one reason why I tell you guys not to trust any other reviews inside of the game and just try out the character. And you want me to prove that you can't make these characters? At all? <sighs> well, point in case. That is. Uh, dude. Yeah, just don't trust a lot of people. Especially with hearing reviews. That's all I gotta say. It really does not. Most of the comments are trolls anyway. Which, they definitely need somebody in their company to review the reviews and delete the ones that aren't even reviews and just trolls. Like, legit. I'm still going to be making him. Well, actually, I already have him. He's, in, he's just sitting in my mailbox. Fallen character can only be acquired through the event that is going on. Cannot craft it into 12-12, guys. December the 12th. So that's why I'm calling BS on some of these reviews. That's why I say don't trust any of them. Unless they're actually, like, legit reviews. But most of them, well, 90% of them are just trolls. As for this character, people have already commented on it, already giving him down votes and everything. I'm still going to build him either way. <laughs> but then again, but then again, we're not really sure what gender this character is. They need to start putting like some bios or something. Because apparently this character is female. Apparently. But then again, I read one of these skills. <laughs> Is it this one? Nope. One of these skills. Oh. Gotta praise those who praise his name. Yeah, never mind. I guess it is a female. Hmm. Interesting. Eh. I don't really care about the gender. As long as they're good, that's fine. But then again, I just want, I just want this character for like the skills. Oh God, gold again! I knew it! I knew it! <laughs> ah, damn it, gold! All right, I'm probably gonna arch this character and use it from there. But then again, <sighs> we're already heading into chapter six, guys. That is the thing. We're legit heading into chapter six now. I don't know how I know that. Boom. Chapter 6. Welcome the Majesties. Yep, we got more enhancements, guys. More stuff to go through. So, more, more uh, resources being used. 
Like, they're legit gonna have to give a lot, and I mean a lot, of good events where we get resources. Because the Majesties is one reason why a lot of people quit. Because it took up way too much time and resources. And this game, oh dear god, it's so bad. <laughs> It's really time consuming unless you're um, a pay player. So it's going to take you like an extremely long time just to get into it. There's another thing I wanted to address before we went over to characters. And that is guild loot. Yeah, we're going to go over <sighs> guild loot. Guild loot for small guilds is now impossible. <laughs> Well, even if you start on the day, you're going to be spending, like, legit the whole week trying to get through this thing. And I'm not even joking. Alright, I farmed this through the night. Yeah, I, s I farmed this through the night this morning. Well, last night. This is how far I've made it. I don't even feel like doing guild loot anymore. I don't even feel like touching it or even looking at it like the buff they gave this thing especially since we have lack of players is just out of this world unfortunately guild members aren't even driven to do it either anymore because our guildmates know that it's just straight up annoying now they don't even touch it either I just touch at least area 5 and just finish that but I won't even feel like finishing area 5 anymore at this point uh, guild loot is basically dead for lower guilds it, it's just straight up dead I gotta do that later too I don't know, dude. They they just changed something that didn't really need to be changed. They just, well, yeah, they definitely buffed something that didn't need to be buffed. It's, well, if they were going to buff it, they didn't have to buff it, like, to a major point where a lot of guilds would just quit. Because I know, like, one guild quit just because it was too difficult. Put gears on you. Because Gilud was their main source of rubies, and now since they can't do it, it's, they just gave up. I know um, some of my guild members started to quit after they seen the change, too. And Gilud came next to impossible. It took us like a whole day and a half just to farm all of it. Like, I'm legit, <laughs> we kept our phones on for a legit a day and a half. And then there was a point where I kept crashing and missing, like, a whole bunch of damage afterwards. So, yeah. They really need to do something about guild loot. It is, it is insane. <sighs> Especially for weaker guilds. It, they probably don't even attempt it anymore. They probably just do the first area and just call it quits at that point. If anything, tower versus that, I would recommend them uh, dealing with guild loot over that. But I doubt they're going to touch guild loot at all and they're just going to keep it the same and just be like, oh, you just need better characters. No, 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 no. That's not how guild loot works anymore. It's, that is definitely not how it works. It is literally not how it works anymore. It doesn't even matter on damage. It just matters on, I guess, how many enemies you kill now. It's, it's just hugely time consuming. It's just become a damage sponge at that point. Like, I'm sorry to complain about a few things in the game, but guild loot is just a major no right now. But let's get into the character skills before I keep rambling on. It's... Uh, 
I have so many things I want to say about this game, but I gotta keep it to myself. Gotta keep it to myself. So since they didn't give us the, um, what was it? The character's information or their skills inside of the patch notes, I guess we're gonna be going over it in here. Inflicts damage on one enemy, increases AoE attacks, stacks up to three times, hits enemies, receive moth poison debuff. That was worded weirdly. But next second skill inflicts damage to all enemies, then explodes moth poison. Okay, dealing additional damage. Per stack. Also increase magic damage. Which stacks up three times. Enemies that are hit receives moth poison debuff. Okay, third skill. Removes all buffs on enemies and inflicts damage. Also turns all enemies into frogs. Okay, we got another morphing character. Okay, it's been a while. It's definitely been a while. Excluding bosses, so you can't turn them into frogs and just do a whole bunch of damage or anything like that. <laughs> uh, that that's actually makes sense because you don't want the guild adventure boss turning into a frog and falling off the cliff. <laughs> Enemies turned into frogs cannot move. Max HP is reduced. I don't think that's going to do anything in guild loot. <laughs> yep. J just saying. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> cannot receive buff. Cannot evade. For boss type monsters, the skill increases range damage and stacks up to three times. Enemies that are hit receives moth poison. Alright, passives. First passive. Moth poison debuff inflicts constant damage over time, so that's actually really nice. No, putting in some DPS. When enemies are hit with skills that have moth poison, increase boss damage. For all party members, stacks up to 10 times. Second passive. Applies moth poison to an enemy that melees. Okay, so melee enemies are going to be receiving moth poison automatically. Alright, third passive. Increases magical damage and skill damage for all party members. Neat, neat, neat. Alright, max passive. Moth Poison is enhanced by 1, increases the damage, increases additional boss damage, and stacks up to 15 times. Also increase intelligence for the caster. Alright, Moth Poison 2. <laughs> okay, are we just increasing the hell out of Moth Poison at this point? And are moths actually poisonous? I've been seeing this concept a lot. Definitely been seeing this concept a lot. I've seen it in some, like, some kind of sh movie that deal with moths and poisoning people. Stuff like that. And I, I wanted to know that. I didn't know I, there was actually poisonous moths. But anywho. Second passive. Moth poison is enhanced by 2. Increase the cost of damage. Increase boss damage and stacks up to 15 times. Also, the caster gets an attack increase and attack speed increase. Alright, arch passive. Moth poison debuff is enhanced by 3. Increase cost of damage, increase additional damage, stacks up to 20 times. Also, increases additional boss damage and attack. Oh, actually, her arch is that. Is actually not all that bad. That's actually really good. Because uh, I say she's good for PvP. PvP, good. PvE is questionable. But definitely good for PvP a little bit. But I, I don't know a huge amount for her. Let's see her animations a little bit. I was gonna say, it takes you a while to fly in. Okay, that's just bright as hell. Jeez. Yeah, she had some pretty neat, unique skills.
Don't really like to see how the characters act on their own. Especially with their own cooldowns. Okay. Alright, let's get into Ash, who I'm actually looking forward to reading. Since people already downvoted her before they could, before she was available. If anything, they, most of them you'll see downvoted it just because they figured out this character was a girl, which I don't, I don't get. People are weird and stupid. Anywho, inflicts damage on one enemy and increases the cooldown of the active skill. So I'm pretty sure active skill means um, any skill that is already on cooldown. I don't think it means active skill of anything that is already, like, ready. But... Or activated skill. I guess. Any skills that activate, they increase the school cooldown on or something? I I'm not sure. Ash is a weird character. Cooldowns is a gray area also in this game. You don't really understand. You kind of understand it, but you kind of don't. <laughs> All right, first skill, remove all removable buffs on one enemy and inflicts damage. When she hits an enemy, she inflicts a seal that stops normal attacks for enemies and cannot be used on boss types. Seal enemies' active skill cooldowns also stop. So, yeah, I'm going to explain that afterwards. And also cannot be removed. Inflicts damage and damage over time to boss types. Increases the damage they receive. Stacks up to three times. But basically what this means is any skills that are on cooldown, they're just going to sit there. So you can have like one second left before you get the skill. And Asher could, where her first skill could just stop that and it could just sit there for like five seconds instead of one all right good for pvp second skill when holy power is stacked up to 20 times use all holy power to increase the party skill attack and melee attack so basically pretty close to um falcon of how he increased but it's saying excluding yourself so you won't be getting any of the buffs unfortunately your team will, but not the caster. But this is alright since Ash is not a damage dealer. Ash is more of a just support. Let's just say that. Not a damage dealer. Mostly just there to buff the hell out of the team. So that's good for Kai, at least. That's definitely going to be really good for Kai and uh, Christopher. Next, also instantly decreases all party members' cooldown active cooldowns excluding yourself because you don't want you don't want instant cooldowns on like <laughs> the character that is giving the cooldowns because that's then that's just gonna create like a really crazy cycle and plus the cooldowns are already decently low for ash oh you become invisible and you also turn on healing for seven seconds get stronger cannot be removed and stacks up to three times so this only goes to you. So that compensates for every other skill that doesn't work on her. Instead of getting this, she gets this. Okay. Not actually all that bad. That makes up for it a little bit. Third skill. Removes all removable buffs Oh, we removed all removable debuffs on the party. Okay, a, a cleanse. Gives shield. Increases normal attacks. Increases AoE attacks. Increases normal attacks. And AoE attacks stacks up to two times. That's actually pretty decent. Oh, and it's on a pretty low cooldown as well. So that's going to be happening for quite a while. Especially if you put on um, cooldown gear. Next. Let's get into passives. First passive. Holy power increased by one 
every normal attack. Okay, stacks up to two. Uh, stacks up to twenty times. Uh, let's see. Second passive increases physical attack and additional boss damage. Pretty good for a physical team. And this is the thing that um, Helio used to have, but hers were like 80%. So you're already cool downing the whole team, including yourself. So that timer that's here can also be pretty much faster than what you're getting here. Max passive. Decreases enemy cooldown speed for 10% on all enemies. Also, the duration for closed. Wait, is it this? Yeah. The duration for your first skill is increased to 16.4 seconds. Hold on. What was it originally? Okay, so it was 11 seconds at first. But now it's changed. Alright, pretty decent. Whoops. Was it this? No, it was this. And increases boss damage. Received. Oh, wait, no. Increases the effect that bosses take more damage. So that increased to 62 from 48. Decent, decent. All right, let's get into the ultimate passive. So, Ash's attack speed increases by 18%. Each time she normal attacks, it gives two holy powers instead. Decreases all party members' active skills by 20% instead of 12%, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, 12%. When using a um, Get Stronger, also increases the duration of enemy debuffs by 20 when using lead. Okay, so that's the third skill. Yeah. Wait, what debuffs did... What? I think they showed... Wait, okay, that's confusing. Because I'm pretty sure this gives no debuffs. Oh, no. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. Never mind. Uh, I'm stupid. <laughs> I am stupid. So, pretty much any debuff they have increases by 20%. So, that means they get the debuffs that stack longer. Is basically what it was going for. Whoops. My bad. So, that means... Yeah, that actually means Ash can just literally increase the timer on debuffs and just make it worse for enemies. It doesn't really give, like, a actual clear of what debuffs it affects, so I'm pretty sure it affects all debuffs. So that can actually be pretty good. Arc increases all skill damage, melee damage, additional boss damage when using... Get stronger. Okay. Oh, that is... Oh, wow, that's actually a giant increase, actually. Overall, Ash is actually pretty decent, but mostly seems to be aimed towards PvP if when playing with cooldowns. But, it can also be useful in PvE when it comes to getting your cooldowns back. To be honest, there's not much PvE content in the game anymore. When I think about it, well, not any any like real good ones versus like bosses or anything like that that we can't destroy with a normal team. So PVE characters are kind of dying off now since they changed uh, guild loot because we always built just to get ready for guild loot. So now that it's like the way it is, that kind of kills it a bit. Hmm, that's unfortunate. Anywho, let's get back to the last two characters. Alright, our new healer. Alright, so what you got? Inflict damage on enemies or heals the whole party. So basically something like black 
Not how she used to be. Well, how she is right now, actually. Alright, her first skill heals all party members and gives a unremovable heal. Okay, that's actually nice. All party members are immune to debuffs. Okay. First skill, actually really decent. And plus, pretty decent cooldown. I don't think it's as close as... I don't think it's as low as other heals, though. That we have in the game, but that's actually pretty decent, especially with um, cooldown gear. Second skill. Revives an ally. Increases the revived ally's attack. And... The revived ally gets invulnerability, so they're not going to be able to receive damage while the skill is going. Cannot be removed. Second skill. Return all debuffs to the enemy. Definitely good for PvP. I like that one. But it really doesn't help when you're immune to them. <laughs> she gives you immunity and returns the debuffs. But that's basically a cleanse. So you can stack debuffs on yourself and just throw them right back. Um, first passive. She falls asleep for 12 seconds after her death. She's revived with full HP. All cooldowns reset once revived and gains our removable and vulnerability for 7 seconds. Okay, so she's basically how Black is. <laughs> she's basically our overlord Black. Okay, that's not that's not that bad to be honest. But 12 seconds? Wait, hold up. What was Black's um revive? I think it was like 9 seconds, right? And Black could um Revive up to two people. So hopefully she can revive up to two people, not just one. Where is Black? I think she's all the way in the back, too. God damn it. Yeah, there she is. Since I don't have her anymore. Where is it? Passive, passive, passive. Oh no, she had seven seconds. Ah. Damn. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> I thought that would be a lot better. But never mind. That is definitely not better. But she revives nonetheless. So self-revive. Um, second passive. Increase the main stats of all party members and gives a 10% recovery every second. Nice, so you're just going to pre be pretty much auto-healing, so no hills are on cooldown or anything like that. That's just pretty much over-healing at that point, so that's actually pretty decent. Um, third passive. Increases melee damage and stamina for all par party members. Alright, max passive. Using all better, which is the first passive. Now removes debuffs on party members. Okay, that kind of defeats the purpose of the second skill now. So the second skill is going to need... Well, the third skill is going to need something new now. Because that literally defeats the purpose of it now. So basically, she has two cleanses though. Which is actually alright. Increases attack speed. And causes... Wait. Is that for all me party members? I think that's for all party members or just the caster, whichever. Causes all attacks to hit. Using CPR skill, which is um, the second skill. Increases the attacks of one ally. Okay. Nice. And I'm guessing this is the third skill. Increases physical attack. And, oh, okay. Never mind. It does get something. Okay, that's better. That's better. So basically, at max, using the third skill increases physical attack and stamina for all party members. And it just stacks up to three times. So that's actually really good for a physical team. She basically just replaced um, Bonnie a little bit, though. 
because she has a revive and she has really good buffs for physical team. Alright, ultimate. Oh god, so we're going through the same thing with the moth again. When using the first skill, remove increase all debuff duration on enemies. So basically having her and Ash together are a good combo. This effect cannot be removed. When using the third skill, decrease the enemy's attack speed, their fixed damage, and the increase the damage they receive by 20%. Okay. Well, 22%. Right, that's not how bad. Okay. How do enemy remove a buff from you? You remove buffs for all their party members. And increase the attack for all party members. This could be stacked up to five times. So... Basically, having um, Lee could also be an issue. Because if Lee is basically going off buffs, which he kind of doesn't, he is going to be dealing a lot less damage because she's just going to be stripping buffs as you strip buffs from her. Okay. Arch passive. Increases physical damage received on all enemies. Third skill. Increases additional boss damage, normal damage, and fixed damage for all party members. Alright, legit. Actually, not all that bad. I actually might up this healer and get her to Arch just to get her ready for Majesty, see if anything. <laughs> and last but not least, the new rogue herself, who everybody's upvoting <laughs> when they don't have her. I guess they're going off for skills. Alright. And the thickness. I mean, what? Anywho. Inflicts damage on one enemy. Inflicts mark of death on all, on all enemies except for... Bosses, huh? Alright, we'll see what mark of death does later. Inflicts damage on one enemy. Steals all the enemy's buffs. Oh, Okay. <laughs> That's the first time we've gotten a character that legit just steals buffs. Okay. Wait, no. Um, Hellhawk did it for a while. But he only stole one at a time, right? She just steals every last one of them. So stacking is not a good thing for your party in PvP with this character. And gaze them upon yourself. If the enemy was casting, casting is cancelled. So if he... Oh, so she pretty much um, hits Kai out of his casting. You guys know the whole absorption heat seal he needs? If she hits him, he automatically stops absorbing HP and getting his gauge up. Also, when you land a hit, enemy attack speed is decreased by 30%. The attack, the damage received on enemy is increased. Okay, not not that bad. This effect is not limited time, and cannot be removed. Wait, hold up. Stacks up to two times. Excuse me. Hold the fuck up. Okay, I know I'm not seeing what I am seeing, right? This thing has no timer. So basically that's through the whole match. That's legit through the whole match. Okay. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> um, so once you get hit by the attack speed down. That's pretty much it. That's through the whole game. Ah, uh, that's... That's something else. Okay. Let's... Keep going. Nothing else could be as broken as that, huh? Okay. So, second passive. Removes all removable debuffs on one enemy. Inflicts, and inflicts damage. The decreased attack speed and received damage effect of invitation all accounts. Okay, so... 
Oh, okay, I see, I see. So it interacts with the first skill. So when you hit with the second skill, it removes um, the first skill. Damage inflicts additional damage based on the number of debuffs canceled, but enemies marked with a um, mark of death instantly die. This cannot be evaded. What? Bro. Bro. Hold up. Time out. So basically you're killing one enemy every like few seconds. Okay then. Um, very, very strong for PvP. Straight up PvP rogue right now. Third skill. Remove one buff on all enemies and inflicts, and inflicts damage. When she hits, inflicts damage over time for 17 seconds while hell door is in effect on enemies attack is decreased these enemies cannot use normal attacks they can only use skills oh okay really not all that bad really strong if anything All right, so let's go to the first passive. The first passive is she can kill, <laughs> she can pretty much kill uh, any enemy that is invisible. So concealed enemies are not her problem. <sighs> Just like Kai, huh? Both of them really don't care if you're invisible. That just makes Miyu just terrible to have now. And I actually like her design, so now she's just unusable. Gains death mark to enemies that are affected by Hell's Gate first. I think I understand that a little bit. Alright, so the second skill polarizes enemies that have received death mark. I have no idea what they're going for there, but alright. We have the second passive. She does not die. From insta death skills. Oh well, all right then. <laughs> all right, do your do your thing. <laughs> so pretty much a one v one between these two. They can't insta kill each other. Noted. Whenever somebody dies or is revived on the battlefield, remove all removable debuffs from yourself and become absolutely invincible. Or invulnerable, whichever one you want to go for. All of her skills will not miss. Increase your attack speed, your attack, and your additional boss damage without any limit. This can be stacked up to 20 times. So definitely PvP for what we see. Because more people are reviving, dying constantly over and over and she's receiving more damage over the course of time. Nice. Can be used in guild loot as well. If you guys are still planning on doing guild loot. Alright. Max passive. When using the first skill instead of uh, decreasing by two times it decreases by three. Yeah. When using Shadow Master, is that uh wait what? Oh, this Shadow Master. So anytime somebody re revives or dies, oh this. At the cooldown is instantly decreased by twenty percent. Stops all enemies cooldown for nine seconds. Oh, okay. So she basically does a little bit of Ash's job. Cool. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to the ultimate passive. When she enters the battlefield, she is invulnerable. And this one time is not... Oh, this one time effect is not removable. 
so you can't take it off as soon as she gets on the field. So you wouldn't have to wait those seconds, which causes like a lot of issues for your team. Enemies hit with Seal of Death receive additional and removable Seal of Death for 11 seconds. Okay, noted. When using the first skill, remove all removable debuffs on on you. Okay, all debuffs on you are removed. I I don't know why I read that so weirdly. All right, arch passive increases additional boss damage when using Hell's Door. All enemies cannot evade or use skills. Oh well, that's BS. Enemies that die during this skill cannot be revived. Oh dear God, is <laughs> she gains immunity? The damage she received is decreased by sixty percent. Gains additional. Bo okay, this character is just straight up broken. Okay, I can see why. All right, cool. She's just straight up broken. All right, let's go back and see everybody's um, skills because I want to see how they look. But I want to get my two cents while I'm doing this. These characters, all four of them together, is a huge issue. <laughs> it's not a PvP. Like, that is just <laughs> broken as hell. These four are just literally a PvP team that is just asking to just destroy... What? You have, um, skills. Alright, pretty cool. Ah, Ash can't use her second skill if there are no teammates around. That's what it is. So, she'll no longer use her two, and she'll no longer get that visibility and healing. That's what it is. Oh, that sucks. So Ash is kind of... It's, it's kind of... God damn. She's kind of hindered. Let's say that. But yeah, these characters are actually pretty damn nice. Especially um, in high. Let's let's just call her in high for short. She's actually really good. She's actually a really good rogue. I want to see the healing part. Oh well, never mind. It cannot be removed if nobody's being revived. Or can't be used if nobody's being revived. So we can't see the animation for that, unfortunately. But that's unfortunate. They really need a, like a little bit of like a little ally for healers. A little ally just sitting in front of you, attacking with you. That definitely needs to be a thing, especially when showing off like a revive. I wanted to see, does she actually insta-kill inside of this? Oh, she has some cool skills though. I'll give her that. Um, I was about to say, she's not normal attacking. Is her attack speed pretty low? Okay. Yeah, her attack speed is actually pretty decently low. Now that I actually see it. But she's mixing it up with her skills. If anything. So this is her at Arch. Unfortunately, she can't kill any of these enemies because they're basically invisible. Okay, 
So that's pretty much all the characters that we've received or are going to receive. Which are going to be pretty fun to see around. i uh, definitely going to say that. And to try out. Jeez, this has been an hour long video. Again, uh, my bad for the long video, guys. Yeah, I have to go through all this stuff. And I do mess up quite a bit. So yeah, if you guys see jump cuts, that's pretty much why. Because I word... Because I've read things like really weirdly. Yeah, because some of it makes no sense at first until you actually try and think about it. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you all on the next one. Until then. Oh, thanks phone for interrupting my outro. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one and enjoy the new characters. Peace out. Don't let anyone tell you what you should do. I got a clear view. We're gonna make it soon. Just keep pushing through. Yo, what you got to lose? Yo, what you got to lose? Yo, what you got to lose? Just keep pushing through. Cause what you got to lose?